Now the first Wednesday of the new year brings us to West Point, Crystal Arena, site of our broadcast tonight, where we're ready to cut the ribbon on the 2019 Patriot League season. The Army Black Knights and the Bucknell Bison right now on stadium. And we welcome you courtside, everybody. Matt Martucci and a happy 2019 to my partner, the coach, Mo Cassara. Something you've been through before, at the opening of conference play, long holiday layover. Now you have to dive into one of the most competitive and well-scouted leagues in the country. And this is what it's all about. You practice all fall, you play the preseason, you get ready, and Bucknell, the heavyweight in the Patriot League, in for a tough test here in West Point. And a heavyweight that looks a little bit different this year. Over 4,800 points gone from its starting lineup, but Kimball McKenzie still a mainstay for the Bison. Well, they return one of the best all-around players in the league. Kimball McKenzie can do a lot and do it well. He shoots it from deep, he's got great range, his playmaking ability, his ability to make big shots for this team, 15 points a game, his assists are up a little bit, almost four a game. He really makes this team go. He pushes the tempo. He pushes the pace. He has a knack to score in a lot of different ways. The senior, one of the best all-around players in the Patriot League. And spearheaded a Bucknell attack where six double-figure scorers ended up knocking off UNLV. Bison play at what's their best stretch of basketball. Meanwhile, for Army, as far as the Black Knights concerned, four starters back, and they're spearheaded by one Tommy Funk. A team that really likes to go up and down, and this guy may be the best playmaker and assist man in the league, averaging over six assists a game. He can score in the paint, makes his team go, pushes the pace. His shooting has improved over 11 points a game. This guy is fun to watch. He's tough, he's hard-nosed, but what he really does well is get his teammates involved. This team loves to shoot the three and get up and down in West Point. And Philly area kid who brings that toughness and a little bit of extra funk in the building tonight. Younger brother Andrew is a freshman at Bucknell. Lots of funk, lots of hoops. We're ready to tip it off. George Clinton would be proud. It's coming up on Stadium. Tonight's game is brought to you by Liberty Mutual, Nugenix Total T, our most powerful formula yet, and 4imprint. 4imprint for certain. And we welcome you back in Crystal Arena, West Point, New York. Bucknell heading on the road for what's two straight Patriot League contests, and it's two-time Coach of the Year, Nathan Davis, once again at the controls. Three years and three Patriot League regular season titles for the Bison. And his starting lineup tonight. Well, they graduated over 4,800 career points. Zach Thomas gone, Stephen Brown gone, Dana Fallon gone, but McKenzie and Sotos, Toomer still at the controls, and of course, Nate Sestina finally getting a chance to be a full-time starter, playing some of his best basketball of his career in Lewisburg. And for the Army Black Knights, who come in at 5-8, Jimmy Allen in what is his third season at West Point, and a game that they often don't necessarily look forward to because he and Nathan Davis go back to their playing days. And trying to build off of what was a 13-win season a year ago, Jordan Fox, a recent 1,000-point scorer in his starting lineup, and I know you really like Alex King, Mo Kassara. Young, talented, maybe one of the best young, talented players in the league, versatile. Interesting sophomore season for him as he gets ready to tip it up here for the Black Knights. That's Army in the gold and Bucknell the blue. And the Bison and what's an almost 75-point-a-game offense. Start with the basketball. Pace is going to be very important here. Bucknell wants to run some offense, make Army defend. Army wants to get up and down. And some of the fastest pace in the country for the Black Knights. Moore with a good look mid-post. And one and done they go. Wilson with a quick clear. Right down Main Street for Funk. Maybe a little extra oomph with over 60 family and friends in the building. And Army gets the early lead. Great start, transition basketball. Talking to Nathan Davis before the game. Need to stop Army's transition. What was your biggest worry as far as conference openers? Well, you know, it's like a whole new season now. All of a sudden, every game here is so important. Going on the road, especially for Bucknell, they're going to get everybody's best shot. They've been the heavyweight, and Army really plays such at such a fast pace. They're tough to defend. Catch and shoot for Fox. And trying to clear, but then unable to do so, Sestina, it'll stay with Army. I thought I thought you were going to say that what didn't you worry about? 
Well, you're, you're very correct there. And, and Jimmy Allen's got to be happy because this is what they want to do, and this is what they do so well. Funk's so good in transition, have to stop the basketball outside the three-point lane, not let him get to the basket. Fox off the little pick and roll. Wilson, maybe too easy. And Sestina with another board. Sestina everywhere on the glass early. Just see his strength and toughness around the basket. Added a little weight to that frame. Too much there for Nate Sestina. And then our lead referee, Bill McCarthy, says contact. Jimmy Soto's hit with the personal. But Soto's the first time down the court, did not stop the basketball early enough. That time gets up and tries to pressure Funk, comes up with a foul. Black Knights in at 72 points a game, but in terms of uh, the Ken Pomeroy metrics, they're 11th in pace. 353 odd D1 programs. Wilson left that one up there, and Sestina already cleaning up the glass, just like he's done among the Patriot League leaders. And there's two easy easy plays around the basket that Wilson's got to finish. You're at home, playing the top team in the league. Got to make those plays count. And too much movement there on the screen for Sestina, and a second team foul on the Bison. And a little bit of Kimball McKenzie's fault there. Got to wait for the screen. Let Sestina set his feet, use that big body you mentioned. He's put on some added weight. Let him set those big, strong feet. Wait for that screen to come. Philly area native Funk, good ball movement. Fox using the window. Bucknell hedging aggressively on every screen. Got to really move in that offside on defense and be ready to help. Sestina. And Moore fighting for the rebound. Back down, down to the Black Knights. That shot's going to be open for Sestina all night. That's a difficult guard for Wilson. We'll see if Army maybe at some point goes to a little bit of a smaller lineup, a little more versatile. We talked about him as being a matchup problem because how many guys that size are willing to step out? And we've seen his presence on the glass, but he can really shoot the three. He's got great range. Fox, who ended up uh, awarded a, a ball for scoring his 1,000th point before the game started. Funk. And Sestina with another board. Soto's trying to force the issue and out of bounds. And there's a look at Jordan Fox from Jackson County, Kentucky. And Army, as you would expect, Run its substitutions at breakneck pace. We were talking about before the game, get ready for somebody who hasn't played yet this season to come in the game. And Coach Allen uses a lot of guys. We'll talk a little bit more later about how they use their prep school system here and develop players. They've got a nice looking young team. Sotos off the screen and found Sestina. I said those still haven't been able to find it. Ani Grayson, who was one of those prep school players a year ago. Two that's nearly in. Contacted going the other way. Nathan Davis will counter with a substitution of his own. Fox sits down. Tucker Blackwell first will see the sophomore from Bloomington, Indiana. And then Paul Newman, who's uh, a Philadelphia kid who they really like uh, at the backup center spot. Much improved. Young guys improved around the basket. Let's see if they can get something going to the basket here. Bucknell settled for a lot of threes and long jump shots. McKenzie catch and shoot as Bucknell trails four to nothing. Apologize for the technical difficulties with uh, our score bug. But Army maintaining the early lead. Just over three and a half minutes, and Wilson will add to it. Well, he didn't like my comment before about missing easy chippies around the basket. That time he takes his time, uses his size and strength, finish around the basket. McKenzie going to the cut, and will draw the contact. The balance, definitely uh, one thing that both of these programs can, uh, can definitely claim. Army with uh, good scoring in its lineup. Bucknell, despite all those losses, multiple double-figure scorers. And both teams have played tough schedules early. You know, they've been on the road. They've played some tough teams. We'll talk about their schedule and who they've played throughout the year here, throughout the broadcast. But 
Uh, that sets you all up for games like this. It's about winning games in the league now. And I like that last play by Kimball McKenzie. That's a veteran play. I talked about it in the open. This is a guy that makes them go. They struggled from the perimeter. He gets something going to the basket. Get to the foul line where he's so effective. And Nathan Davis has been telling us for a couple of years, as to your alpha, you know, is it Stephen Brown? Is it somebody else? No, it's Kimball McKenzie. And too much movement again for Army going the other way. Little early game jitters there again. Set your feet, wait for that screen, use that ball screen. And we talked about it. Bucknell's going to hedge really aggressively and then try to move the ball off your West Point. And Kane Edwards, who just checked in, senior from Shirts, Texas. So a pair of team fouls for Bucknell, pair for Army. Bison trailing 6 to 2 early, played over four minutes. Bobby Toomer. Missed a good portion of last year. Offense definitely has uh, come back, though, for Toomer. Shot clock at three, and Jones catch and shoot. But still, Bison don't quite look like themselves coming off the holiday. Nice, solid defensive possession there, though, for Army. Amezi with the find for Grayson. More of the quick clear. McKenzie down Main Street. And nobody home in terms of the defensive glass. A pace, though, you would think favors the Black Knights. It, it absolutely does. I agree with you. Their, their pace getting up and down much favors Army. They're going to play more guys, and they love to play at a fast pace. Now played over five minutes. Black Knight cushion is four. Trying to run a little two game in the corner. More. Taken off the glass by Grayson. Forcing the issue and a good challenge there by Jones. Now still though yet to really find it. 0 for 9 to start the game, making 0 for 10 with the McKenzie miss. Well he's the one guy that's always going to have the green light. He's their veteran. He's the guy that can really get them going. Army continuing to really try to throw the ball inside and play inside out. Oh, good reversal, Grayson. They're going to let him shoot that. Honor the percentages, just under 29% from out there. Another look this time for Blackwell, who's a much better shooter. We're in an early season three-point shooting contest here at West Point. <laughs> Shaking off the holidays. Well, we talked about it. You know, when you're playing your first league game, you kind of throw out all the good things you did, all the bad things you did in the preseason, and this game has a lot of meaning for both teams. Over the top to Newman, who draws the contact with 13.47 to play in the first half. And so far, Army able to get up and down the court. Black Knights, the early lead on the Patriot League Network on Stadium. Tonight's game is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Find yourself an agent at Farmers.com. Well, you have to pick a side, or maybe you don't, if uh, you're one of the 60-plus that traveled to see either Tommy Funk for Army or younger brother Andrew. So Tommy, the older of the two, both of them attending Archbishop Wood in Bucks County outside the Philadelphia area. But uh, that's a little tough if you're a family member. Who do you root for there, Mo Kassara? Very tough. We'll see if the, uh, if the division, you know, people start moving seats here as the game goes on. <laughs> and younger brother entering the game here the first, for the first time. Uh, built a little different, we talked about off the air. Long range here, a little bit more of a shooter, and has gotten hot of late, 10 of his last 20 uh, from the three. And he's going to look to come in here and try to get some offense going here for Bucknell. As their second leading bench scorer, averages under six a game, does Andrew Funk. Bison shot clock down to 12, high percentage for Newman, plus the foul. And that's good coaching. Timeout, you'll see the play here run something, get something going to the basket. You see a little pick and roll. Army doesn't handle it real well. Late to help. And then throw it inside of the big fella. Get something going to the basket. Because obviously, we've mentioned the three is not going in right now. So play around the basket. Nice coaching there, Nathan Davis and staff out of the timeout. And you talked about going deep into the bench. Ben Kinker in now for Matt Wilson. Six foot eight freshman from Greensburg, Indiana. And our officiated crew wanted to to take a look at the contact on that last call. There's Jimmy Allen. Talked to him uh, before the game, and 
both he and Nathan Davis, you never like to, to have to coach against your friends. I know you didn't like doing it, but it's something you have to do uh, if you've been in the profession long enough. Always a difficult thing, but two guys that really respect each other have a lot of similar backgrounds. They love this league. You know, they have coached throughout this league. And you see the play again here, here not handling that ball screen really well. Nice job by Soto's throwing the ball inside. A little bit of a phantom foul there, though, but headed to the line for the three-point play. Reach in there. Ooh. Officiating crew checking it out. Try to figure out who the foul was on is what they were trying to identify there in the quick reach in. Terrific officiating crew we have here today. And it's actually not on Wilson, which is big. Instead goes uh, to Alex King. So only one on Matt Wilson. Newman, uh, only a 62% foul shooter. Kick the guy you mentioned hasn't really gotten going here. Many offensive touches. Like to see Army see if they can get him involved here offensively. Another guy that's kind of a matchup hybrid. Wilson, man, nice touch with the hook. He has a knack for hitting really tough shots. Missed a couple easy ones early, but again, Army going inside and Bucknell playing a little faster than they would like to. And so Bison have turned it over. They haven't shot the basketball well. Army liking to get up and down the floor as much as it can. Mike Knight's what were six Patriot League wins a year ago. Four starters back here. Wonder can they eclipse that this year? Couple coaches throughout the league. You see another nice play inside. Bucknell chooses not to double in the post. And Army continues to go inside a team that really likes to shoot the three. But a couple teams, coaches in this league, really believe Army may be the sleeper team in the league. I know you talked to one of them before the game. And, and he quietly said, this is a very dangerous team. They've got great guard play. They can shoot the three, and they're tough at home. After the younger Funk left it up on the rim. Played seven and a half. Army enjoyed the six-point lead. Matt Martucci, former Hofstra head coach, Mocha Sun. And a baseline balancing act for the Richmond, Virginia native and the freshman, Aaron Duhart. Another one of those guys that ended up playing at the prep school. 17 of the 25 that they have on their roster were, were part of the prep school a year ago. And the Army prep school is, is now here on the, on the military base here at West Point. Uh, a wonderful facility, terrific transition for many of these young men and women to uh, you know, have a chance to really learn and get used to what the military and the academy life is like before they really enter. Jones hitting the deck. This one will go uh, against the Black Knights again. Team fouls piling up. Bucknell team that shoots it at 70% in the bottom for what is always a very good Patriot League in terms of free throw depth. and Sotos and Sestina. John Meeks also in for Bucknell at Army with uh, another steal and Fox able to capitalize back into the game at his 34th three of the year. That's a layup for him. Wide open three in transition. That's just like a layup. They love to get out and run. Hey, we talk a lot about Army's offense, but their defense has been terrific here early on. And a quarter of their points this year coming off of turnovers as they force Meeks to go up and do something he didn't want to do. Funk using the screen. Army shot clock down to 10, so the pace slows briefly. Funk again, the acrobatics. But left it up there, and Sestina cleaning. Catch it, shoot, Jones. Good offensive glass for Meeks, plus the foul. It's the Burlington, North Carolina native who will be on the free throw line when we come back. But not a whole lot of positive for the Bison here early on. Army getting out in transition. But Meeks is the one who will try and complete the three-point play on stadium. Tonight's game is brought to you by Liberty Mutual. Nugenics Total Team. 
and four imprint. Now, not a terribly far drive from New York City, West Point, New York tonight. Crystal Arena and the home crown being treated to once a seven point early Army lead, Mokasara. But Army's defense really been the difference here. Done a nice job throughout the game, transition, half court defense, solid. Forced Bucknell into a lot of contested threes. And forced four turnovers, and they've been able to score off those turnovers, seven points off the turnovers. So that's really been the difference in the game. Bucknell with a nice offensive rebound there to try to get themselves back in it. Meeks got to the foul line a ton, but able to capitalize, get three the old-fashioned way. Meeks sits down. And it's the freshman Walter Ellis, first we'll see, out of Granger, Indiana, six foot five. Fox and Amezi, along with Funk, are around the perimeter. Wilson's already had a good start, and that's just too easy over Sestina. Wilson, nice job getting position, and Sestina playing dead behind. Can't do that in post defense. Pushes this lead back to eight for the Black Knights. Catch and shoot for Toomer. I feel like maybe they're settling a little too much. They are, and this is where Army's really good in transition. And Grayson with inside of 11 minutes to go with another miss. Coming to the halfway point of the first half, apologize for the technical difficulties, the fact that you can't see the time. Moore with a nice feed, but too many steps for Sestina. And already the fifth Bison turnover for a team that only averages 12. Yeah, this is not the start that Nathan Davis and his team wanted, and I think you could sense that right away. This is a, a difficult Army team to play, and as the pace quickens here a little bit and the Army gets going up and down, they become very tough to catch up on. Funk trying to build it out there with Blackwell and Grayson. And then Wilson and Amezi, the five. Soto, Satumer, Sestina, Moore, and Ellis for Bucknell. And again, good post position for Wilson, drawing some contact. And how about the pass by Funk? Stop and go, stop and go, see what the defense gives you. One-handed bounce pass right in the post, create the foul. Terrific, terrific pass by, I think, probably the best playmaker in the league. Bruce Moore hit with what's his first personal. No stop there, little stop and go, tough to guard, trying to take away the drive, and boom, he drops it off in the post. And if he's doing that against your most versatile defender, it's going to be a, could be potentially be a long night. Yeah, it is. It is long. He's tough to guard. And you can see him here. Another ball screen action with him making plays. Funk with the shot clock down to six. It's a tough matchup with Sestina. Nice closeout. And that ends up off of Wilson, or actually off of Moore and out of bounds. It'll stay at this end and a fresh shot clock for the Black Knights. Thing about Matt Wilson, he is not going to give an inch down there. That is one strong guy, 6'9", junior. Played a lot of minutes here, getting better around the basket, and physical, tough play. You really got to drive him away from the basket. He yeah, likes that painted area. 61% career field goal percentage for Matt Wilson. More than halfway gone to the first half, and so far, all Black Knights. Now struggling to shoot the basketball and take care of it. And they now commit their fourth team foul. And it ends up going on Ellis. Now you can have exclusive access to the best, best matchup stories and features when you subscribe to Stadium Plus. Get a front row seat for 500 premium events. College football, basketball, and baseball. Watch stadium.com slash stadium dash plus. Or just Google Stadium Plus and click on the link to learn how to subscribe. All kinds of conference play going on tonight as Wilson gets stuff from behind, but there was some arm there with Avi Toomer. Nice kick out. Army shares the basketball. Mezzi had him early, a second late. He got there a second late, and Toomer tries to catch up, and Wilson back to the foul line. Army has really dictated the pace of play here on both ends. 
And Wilson, for a guy who shoots it as well uh, from the field as he does, maybe in one area as a big, you'd like his game to get better. Something he's got to continue to improve on because he's going to get fouled around, a lot around the basket and free throw shooting, not his strength, has never been really throughout his career. His form still looks a little better, but 0 for 2 from the line. Nice foul there by Tumor. The Army team that has not shot it well, under 66% for the charity stripe as a whole. Those are the ones that drive coaches crazy, man. You, you go through a great play, you get to the foul line and come up empty. Feels like an epidemic, right? More, more kids today don't seem to shoot it at as, as high a percentage. And again, Bucknell struggling to maintain the basketball. You see kind of line changes here. It's a little bit like a hockey game. Both coaches just looking for a, a group that can, can execute on both ends and looking for a, a unit that really will play together. Bucknell kind of searching for that on the road. And Army, as we mentioned, will just run guys in and out all night. Yeah, breakneck pace. Ben Robertson, the junior from High Point, North Carolina, who's the high flyer for the Bison, gets off the floor. He's the one off the bench, out there with Toomer, and now Newman and McKenzie and Moore. Shot clock down to three. Robertson, that's not his game, and ran out of time. Another Bison turnover on the shot clock violation. One thing Army has done, they've stayed in their stance, they've guarded ball screens, they've switched, they've helped, they've talked, and they've played through entire possessions. So that's the one you're going to watch in the film room tomorrow and be awful happy if you're Coach Allen. Bucknell turning it over what's now six times. I feel like if you're the Bison, this can't get to double digits, right? You're right, and one thing you touched upon earlier, as you see a Mezzi with the long shot. And there it is. They're kind of rolling right now. One thing you mentioned earlier is Bucknell lost so much last year and still trying to kind of find their way back from that will be challenging at times, especially on the road. And early on down 11 after the Mezzi make and going down an offensive foul on McKenzie. 7.32 to play here in the first half. All kinds of substitutions for the Black Knights. Even John Amezzi. Deep in that bench can knock down the three. Army up 11. Tonight's Patriot League basketball game on stadium is brought to you by Liberty Mutual, by Nugenics Total T, and by Four Imprint. Now, uh, what's been an impressive start for the home team here early on? What's now ballooned to an 11-point lead, Mo Kassar. Matt Wilson getting it done. He's been the difference inside. Four for six from the field, five rebounds, eight points. And he missed a couple bunnies early, or he really would have been a, a dominant stat line, but been really a presence and finished around the rim. And they've been able to throw the ball inside and kind of play off of that. And Matt Wilson has really been the difference here early for Army. Former Mr. Basketball finalist in the state of Kentucky. Continuing to up his play and coming off of what was a rough game in their last matchup. Kessler entry down low. And Wilson with another one off the jump hook. And another nice offensive possession as they move the ball then go back inside. Bucknell gets caught again. The young fella playing dead behind in the post. Can't do that against Matt Wilson. Moore with a good look, but again, they can't buy one. 0 for 11 from the three for Bucknell. Army trying to extend a largest lead, and they will. This time, it's Kessler, who's only a 20% three-point shooter this year. Everything going right for the Black Knights. A 10-0 run for Jimmy Allen's guys. Great roll guy, but how about the pass? And this is what they do best. Mr. Funk in transition. Drive, kick, dish, willing shooter, Army basketball. And this is why you never know in this league, Mo Kassara. Thought that maybe this could be in the opposite direction of what we're seeing right now with what Bucknell's done in this league over the years. Right, and, and let, let's look at what Bucknell's even done this year. They've beaten Vermont, one of the best mid-major teams in the country, at Vermont. They're 3-0 against the Atlantic 10. They've beaten Rhode Island. They've beaten UNLV. This team is a terrific team who's got a lot of experience. But again, you get into league play, throw it all out on a Wednesday night. 
What day is it? Is it Wednesday? I'm screwed up with the New Year. It's, you know, is it it's Wednesday? already Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Okay, thanks. Wednesday night <laughs> in January. You have kids. You're allowed to, to <laughs> miss a day here and there. <laughs> now the success, not only under Nathan Davis, but his predecessor, Dave Paulson, who I know you know well. And, of course, even long before that, Pat Flannery. Did a terrific, terrific tradition at Bucknell. They've done nothing but win. They recruit terrific student athletes. And every year in, year out, they, they just reload. And you can see Nathan Davis uh, frustrated here, trying to find some different guys and different units to play together. And defensively, offensively, just a little out of sync here tonight. Eight bison turnovers now. And Army enjoying what's been its largest lead of the basketball game. Have been able to control from early on. It was six to two from the jump. And since then, Bucknell with just five points. Bison have not hit a three. They're overall two of 18 from the field. Good officiated crew tonight. Led by Bill McCarthy. You know, they were all happy to see me. They, they used to never be happy to see me when I was on the other sideline. Yeah, it's funny how that changes. Funk able to go up in the air. And again, another new largest lead. His playmaking ability is just super. Gets guys involved, makes big shots. Sestina trying to use the rim as a shield. And couldn't get the reverse to go. Amezi already has one of those. Balanced effort so far tonight for the Black Knights. Funk with the shot clock cut in half. Amezi, they're able to get the extra pass. Grayson, and again, not a great three-point shooter, but when everything's going right, it's going right. And his first three didn't look like they stood a chance, and he, again, got an open three, but that was ball movement by Army. They share the basketball. Look for Bucknell maybe to change defenses here, go to some zone, try to just get Army out of sync here a little bit. Moore deep in the post. And that's usually an easy shot for Bruce Moore, not tonight. Funk getting a little separation and the friendly bounce. The dynamic lefty is just having fun tonight and having his way. And what is now a 17-0 run over the last five and a half minutes for Army. And how about Tommy Funk, the six-foot junior? Crafty, knows how to use his body, finish around the rim. Six, over six assists a, a, a game, and he really has a nice touch, that lefty. Boy, that soft touch, uses the rim, and just really controlling the tempo, clapping his hands, having fun here in front of his family. Yeah, big time family affair. More than 60 family and friends in attendance, and they all have their shirts. The Black Knight on one side, the, the Bison on the other. I said, is it is it dictated by section? If you're sitting closer to the Army bench, are you you're for Tommy? And if you're on the other bench, are you Team Andrew? Well, whoever designed the shirts did a nice job because they've, they're sitting in the right place. They've got Bucknell on the right side and Army on the left. I mean, terrific job and wonderful family. Had a chance to meet them over the years and traveling and doing covering the Patriot League. And uh, these two young players are not only terrific basketball players, but great student athletes. Andrew Funk's teammate, Jimmy Soto's missing the three. Been a theme tonight for the Bison. King gets an open look. And chased down to the corner by Jones. Probably not the shot Jimmy Allen wanted, a really hard contested three by King, who has not been able to get going here offensively. Well, you want to win the mini run, I guess, if, if you're Bucknell here. Where does this have to be for you to feel a little bit better by half? Well, I'd like to see them get to the foul line here a little bit and stop turning the basketball over, which they've just continued to do. Fox forcing the issue. 80% of the way through the first half. All Black Knights, Wilson and Funk and the like. Fox has had a hand in it, too. And that time got tipped out of bounds with eight on the shot clock. 
And will bring us to another official timeout. 3.50 to go in the first half. And Army, no hangover off the break, up big. Now three members of the class of 2018 for Bucknell. Steven Brown, not a foul, and Zach Thomas, all earned first team all Patriot League honors. First time in league history that three players from the same team named to the first team. First class in Patriot League history to win four straight outright regular season titles. Second class to feature three 1,000 point scores. They rank fourth, fifth, and 19th on Bucknell's all time scoring list. And last season, the first time in school history that three different players with 500 plus in a season. Well, they could use those guys tonight. Look at those numbers. Well, we kind of touched on it. When you have three guys like that, who I really do believe were the three best players in eight seconds on the shot clock here, I believe were the three best players in the Patriots last year. Whenever it wasn't going well, you know, you always had an answer. You had somebody to turn to, and this is who they need to turn to now, Kimmel McKenzie, one of the best players in the league. But Bucknell had so much experience and so many great players for so many years. You see the quick replay here. Kimmel McKenzie trying to get to the foul line here. And Army saying it was all ball. That's what happens when you're senior and one of the best players in the league. Get a good call and get to the foul line. That's what they need to do. Get to the foul line here. Set your defense. Kimmel McKenzie, one of the better free throw shooters in the league. Jimmy Allen again going to have to go to his bench. McKenzie, 82% on the year. Good for top 15 in the league. King sits down with the three personals. John Amezzi back in. It was uh, an injury plague junior year for Kimball McKenzie. He only, only did miss one free throw. It came in the tournament game against Michigan State. He's played in a lot of big games, and we talked about that big three not being here anymore, and that's why you're seeing a lot of subs and, and a lot of new experiences here for some of these players at Bucknell in the Patriot League. Amezzi with uh, some movement. Called for the offensive foul. There's the younger Funk. Andrews, a few inches taller. I'm sure uh, he brings that up to his older brother every now and then. I'm sure he does. Yeah, he's built a little differently. Long, lanky, terrific perimeter shooter. And Nathan Davis is really excited about him. Was excited about him before he even got here. I remember talking to him about him a couple years ago. So he's got a bright future here for Bucknell. Sestina with a little extra English on the reverse. And that's good offense right there. Go inside, get something around the basket. Try to get a little momentum here before halftime. And mark it down at just over three minutes. That's the first field goal for Sestina. Offensive glass for the Black Knights. Excellent find. And there's Wilson from Funk. Instead of taking a long contested three, waits a little second more. And that's why he's the best assist guy in the league. Terrific pass. Wilson already into double figures with 12 tonight. 11th time this season, and again, Bucknell just all out of sorts. This time on Moore, his second personal. Bruce Moore, guys played a lot of minutes here for Bucknell. Physical play underneath, and eh, tough call there. But you're on the road, and those are the things you got to play through, and another teaching moment here for Coach Davis, and I'm sure they'll bring that up at halftime. Yeah, road games, especially to open up league play. A lot of fun for a coach, right? Very difficult. Like I said, throw everything else out. Got to try to go win on the road first league game. And Army, a team who's lost two in a row coming into this game, desperately needs a win. Funk splitting the defense. Everything but the finish. But now trying to somehow get this inside 20 before the break. Important two minutes here for Bucknell. Try to get a little momentum going into halftime. The younger Funk gets caught up. McKenzie with all the shots in his arsenal, but not there. Army's contested every shot here in the first half. And that's Sestina Bucket. It's the first field goal since the 11.07 mark. So an over eight minute field goal drought for the Bison. Final last two minutes here with the opening 20. Grayson gets another look, and it keeps raining from the outside. Well, he's not afraid to shoot it, is he? Doesn't look great when it goes up. What was it for Batman, the, uh, the flying Graysons? <laughs> Certainly letting it fly. Sestina can hit that, and does. Big shot. 
And quick timeout for Army. What's the 13th three of the year for Nate Sestina? Watched him catching him in, in pregame warm-ups from about five feet beyond the line and knocking him down. Guy's really improved his body. Now finally getting a chance to play and play more after the big three is gone. And this he does well. Sets his feet, hands and feet ready to shoot. He had a couple really good looks early in the game. They just didn't go in. So Bucknell now with a big basket there in three. A defensive stop here or two and a little momentum going into halftime and then they can regroup and talk about what they need to do defensively and, and certainly offensively at halftime. And 35 up on the board. They're halfway toward their bowl game football score. Boy, what a year for Army football. How about it? Army athletics, beautiful facilities driving in here. See Coach Davis there and his staff done such a terrific job year in and year out and just haven't shot the ball well here, but Army has a chance here, a minute, minute 11 to go here. Good offensive possession and really put a dagger in this first half. Funk out there with Kessler and Amezi. Wilson and Fox, and good look from Fox to Wilson. Meeks able to clean up the glass. And the Bison get it inside 20 before the break. Meeks, who they really like off the bench. Now they can provide some instant offense. Sotos with a good recognize. Sestina wanted another one. And now you can basically hold for the last one. Slight difference between the shot clock and game clock. And this basketball is going to stay with number three throughout this entire possession. Let him create a play, make a play, whether it's him offensively or drive in addition. Excellent first half for Funk. Contact away from the ball. Well, you settle for the next best thing. Front end to some free throws. Sestina picks up his second, so now the Bucknell front court. Both he and Moore two apiece. Yeah, and I don't, I don't like that at all. I mean, I think obviously you're putting a weak free throw shooter on, on the foul line, but Sestina with two fouls, he's a guy that you're really going to need here in the second half. So. Uh, Really not a good foul, in my opinion, and he's got two, and going to have to do some big things here in the second half for Bucknell to get back in this game. And this time, Wilson's stroke looks better. 13 first half points for him. Talked about the balance of both of these programs. Everyone who scored for the Black Knights, nobody has less than three points. Six different players up on the board in the first half. Wilson gets another. Well, and the foul really didn't work out because you put a weak free throw shooter on and he gets he gets two for you. So 12 seconds left here. Look for Sotos to try to drive and dish and try to maybe kick out for a three, see if they can get Funk maybe rolling up. Six seconds, Funk. Sestina coming off the curl, got the look, and it won't go. 37 first half points up on the board for the home Army Black Knights. It was only one game in over three weeks for Army coming off the holiday. No after effects, playing some great basketball. Well, certainly what is a, a tougher college commitment uh, than most 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds uh, certainly have to deal with. Army with a 24 point halftime lead. A brotherhood and uh, certainly a commitment to service. Matt Martucci, the coach, Mo Kassara, getting ready to start the second half. And it's a nine game win streak for the Bucknell Bison. To make it 10, you're gonna have to completely revamp your second half. And how do you do that one possession at a time? A couple defensive possessions in a row, a couple stops, get a little momentum, let a little of your experience come out and that's gonna, it's gonna take here for Bucknell, possession by possession. Get a little confidence back. Then the ball seems to, to go in after that. Yeah, last Army win of this series actually did come in this building. Back in March 2014, 72-71. Funk with a great first half. Fox had a pretty good one too. And again, ball movement. They get the shot they want from Funk. 
And staying with the offensive glass, there's Kessler's second field goal. And they got the defensive stop they needed, but a hustle play by Army leads to another basket, and that's what frustrates coaches, especially out to start the second half. McKenzie using the body and will go to the line. And that's when you know, though, that you're, you're having a tough night. Jacob Kessler, not an offensive threat for this Army team. And one thing you're always going to get out of guys like Kessler, hustle plays, extra efforts. That's the thing you'll always see out of these Army teams. And um, Coach does such a great job. Jimmy Allen, and you see here, Jimmy Allen does a great job of preaching this with his guys and pushing his guys. Little hustle play, extra effort. And that's what you need to do to win games, especially in league. And I do like Bucknell, McKenzie getting to the basket, getting back to the free throw line. And makes a pair, now five of six on the night, Kimball McKenzie. There's enough veteran presence on this Bucknell team. They know you're, you're not going to get this back all at once. It has to be run by run. And, and, and great teaching moment here. Got to really sit down and guard and play through possessions. And there's another nice job by Bucknell forcing a contested shot. Yeah, Messi left that short. Sotos again, still can't find a bucket. And Sotos nearly over and back. They might have missed that. Sestina catch and shoot. Second one of the game from the outside. Mentioned his range, his ability to shoot from the perimeter. Tough guard for Wilson all the way out there on the perimeter. Eight now for Nate Sestino, but it's taken him nine field goal attempts to do it. Wilson, and again, left that one up on the rim. Here come the Bison. And a change. Bucknell doubles in the post that time and forces a turnover. Played 90 seconds. And they keep shaving it down. This time, Sestino, five straight for him. Important possession here for Army. Take some time off the clock. Try to get the momentum back. The ball needs to be in Mr. Funk's hands. Sestina into double figures. Armezzi has one made three tonight, but has missed his last two. And Bison maybe getting a little greedy with McKenzie. This time, window and the bucket for Armezzi. Off the turnover, terrific job by Army, and another tough turnover for Bucknell in transition leads to a three-point play the unconventional way, and Mezzi, two really not very good shots, that time taking it to the basket. Chance for a three-pointer the old-fashioned way. 75% foul shooter, but Mezzi not true to the percentages. Sestina, that was about where he was pulling up from in warm-ups. It's time to hop. Shot clock cut in half with Toomer. And the rise in the window. First field goal of the night for Avi Toomer. And you see some of Bucknell's athleticism that we really didn't see in the first half. Toomer, Moore, those are guys, terrific all-around athletes. Have to use that athletic presence here to get back in this game. Fox, nice feed. There's Wilson. But again, short-armed it, picks up a personal. And you gotta love Wilson, right? He's such a tough kid, plays so hard, just seems to always miss a couple of those little bunnies there around the basket. Sometimes there you gotta, you know, big players out there, fellas, you gotta grab the ball, take one extra second, maybe a shot fake, and then finish around the rim. He kind of quick armed that one. Yeah, picks up his second personal in the process, and we'll have to sit. Enzi and Soto, Sestina, Moore, and Toomer. And foul on the floor. Kane Edwards picks up a second. I mentioned what was over three weeks. Just one game in a little over that. What was a loss to a very good Niagara team. Tough schedule, last three or four games for Army. And Sestina right to the rack. And you want to talk tough, 12 now for him. And terrific athlete again, I mentioned it. Now you see the athleticism of Bucknell all of a sudden come alive as their offense starts to click. Shave this by seven. And stepping on the baseline, called for steps is Edwards. 
And what sets this play up for Nate Sestina is his ability to shoot the three. Late help there, quick to the basket, terrific hops for a very big, powerful Nate Sestina. Could you rise up like that in your playing days? Only in my Nerf hoop in my, in my, uh, <laughs> my, my, my dorm room. Nice seal for Sestina right on the block. And all of a sudden, it's the winner of Nate starting. And a little playmaking there by Mr. Sotos. Throwing the ball into the rim, Nate Sestina, the big fella, for Bucknell trying to fight back here at West Point. Uh, certainly been Nate Sestina's second half, Mo. It has, and it's his range and ability to shoot the three. Nice soft touch, and his ability to shoot the basketball, late help, and this guy can rise and get to the rim. Now it's gonna be on the other end for Nate Sestina and these Bucknell Bison. We've seen their athleticism, we've seen their offensive ability. Now it's gonna be about defensive stops for them and for Army. Get back to what you did well. Really make Bucknell guard in the half court. Keep the ball in Tommy Funk's hands and let him create plays. 15 point lead and continues to be cut into. Toomer, the pick and roll with Sestina and another bucket. Toomer's had a little bounce here in the second half and he's tough to guard and if you're Army now, it's danger time and another turnover on the baseline. And stepping on it was Fox with 15.47 to go here in the second half. Keep feeding the beast. This time off the pick and roll, Stockton Malone or Toomer Sestina here on Stadium. That's running with the pack, coming soon, only on Stadium. And that's the Nevada team that's still undefeated at the top of the Mountain West, Mo Kassara. I think Coach Musselman and those guys are having fun out there, or yeah, what? Yeah, I would say so. I'm looking forward to watching that, and obviously looking forward to watching them play throughout the year. People think they may not lose. Um, they've certainly got the talent, a couple of transfers, and some great recruiting, and a lot of energy from Coach Musselman. They are going to be fun to watch, and I think you're going to see a lot of that in college basketball this year. A lot of parity, a lot of teams that are going to surprise you when we get to March. Speaking of surprises, we had one in the first half here. But now trying to work its way back. After Moore with the miss, Knight's able to get the possession. And Wilson against soft touch with the heel. And this time McKenzie, good call by Bill McCarthy on the sideline. A reminder that you can stay tuned and follow the Patriot League on social media at Patriot League. With the latest scores, highlights, and news. Matt Martucci, the coach, Mo Kassara. It's halfway through the shot clock. King, who's been in foul trouble for a good portion of this game, with a miss from the perimeter. Sestina finds himself wide open. Huge second half continues. Already passed his averages. Nate Sestina, 19 now on the game. Well, he may be the best all-around player in the league, and Army continues to take some quick, ill-advised threes, but it's really been Bucknell's defense here in the second half. And they've shaved 14 points off this deficit. Wilson drawing what's a third personal on Moore. Wilson's a handful down there but speaking of handfuls Nate Sistine is a handful of guard and Army not handling that ball screen action well see that's a tough tough slide for Wilson to handle the ball screen try to keep the ball out of the perimeter nice job by Sotos and Bucknell finding the open man Sistina stepping back you notice the ball didn't come down when he caught it goes right up he keeps it high uses his legs got great legs we saw from that dunk he had along the baseline so Critical time here for Army, continue to try to go inside. And there they go, Wilson. And helped him early, pushes this back to 12. You know, we talk so much about the guards in the open, it's really been the two big guys, Wilson and Sestina. They're putting on a show here, inside, outside, 
three-pointers and plays around the basket. Dueling banjos. Sestina down with what's four main three-point field goals at 22 points, takes the charge. Down to a nine-point Army lead. And Wilson just picked up his third. And you'll see they're going to also make a sub because of the foul trouble here, but also they've got to get a change here on Sestina because they're having trouble guarding him. It's too far of a, of a closeout for him. And then on the other end, his energy and effort defensively taking a charge. Nate Sestina, what is too shy of a career high with what he's done tonight. 24 set earlier this year on the road against LaSalle. And they tried to run a little set play there for him to get him another look at a three, and I would think they'll continue to do that because he's really been the offensive presence. Campbell McKenzie along with Sotos. Setting up Meeks who just checked in. There he is from the perimeter. Sotos has really been the key here for Bucknell. His playmaking ability, getting guys involved, has really helped this offense click. That's the first Bucknell made three for somebody other than Nate Sestina. And all the way down to a two-possession game. 4 threes tonight for Nate Sestina. And what's a new career high? Give him a block to his total. Stay at this end, but... No change of possession, so shot clock stuck at two. Two on the shot clock. Sestina, terrific legs, reach. Really fighting his team back into this game here. Long way to go, 12.42, and Army's going to have to find some offense here to keep this lead. Grayson, catch it, shoot off the inbounds. A tumor running the break. Drew some contact, Steve with it, the rise up, plus the foul. That's an angry herd of Bison. It sure is, and athleticism, quick speed, getting out and running here. Again, Soto's terrific throw, the ball ahead. Tumor maybe gets away with a little bump there, but stays with it. Great wheels, great legs. And Great athleticism here for Bucknell on display in the second half. But it's been their defense. It's their defense and runouts, playmaking ability of Sotos, and obviously we've mentioned Sestina. The ability to do it at both ends has made this a one possession game. Jordan Fox has got to get involved here offensively because what's happened now, if Wilson can't score inside, all of a sudden, you see the double team immediately in the post. They don't have a lot of other options. It's got to be Fox on offense. Uh, Mezzi and Grayson have both been successful from the perimeter, but don't feel like you can count on that long term. And ask for it, and you get it. But maybe not the shot Fox wanted. And Meeks alone. Everything but the finish on the up fake. And I like that play. That's a veteran play. The team needs some offense going right to the basket. And they'll go with the arm bar on Meeks. Not now, it's on Amezi. With 11.45 left in the second half. The way this looked at halftime, didn't think we were going to have a basketball game. Although, calling Nate the great here in the second half, Nate Sestino, whether it be inside or outside, getting it done for the Bison at both ends. Army by just five. Tonight's game is brought to you by Liberty Mutual, Nugenics Total T, and Four Imprint. Now it isn't written it was the worst of times, it was the best of times, but that's how it's gone for Bucknell, first half to second half. Experience, experience, experience. This is a team with the guys who've been through it, been to the NCAA tournament, watched guys ahead of them, learned how to win, and you know, a lot of credit to Army. They played a tremendous first half, but they're gonna have to find a way to stop Bucknell and find a way to score a little bit on offense here because the Bucknell offensive machine is starting to click. 
Where we left you, Tommy Funk got a bucket to push it back to two possessions. Meeks, way too wide open. Wilson able to clean up the rebound. Funk trying to get back to the pace they enjoyed in the first half. And Mezzi with a second three. Watching John Mezzi over the years, he has no conscience. He will shoot at any time from anywhere. Takes a couple bad ones, but that was a big three for Army. Look with double digits again. Beeks caught up in a triple team. Sonos, and a little hesitation didn't matter. Well, he's, he's not looking to shoot all the time. He has eight assists in this game, five rebounds. He's really been the difference here in the second half. A little bit of an unsung hero. Big shot there for Sotos. Came in top five of the league. He's second in the league in assists. Top ten in assists to turnover ratio. And here he goes down Main Street. Five straight now for Jimmy Sotos, and we're back to a one possession game. Big time little highlight step, keeping himself finished. Sotos been terrific in the second half. Can Fox match? Yes, he can. Well, that's the guy that's got to score for them. He's got to keep shooting the ball. Second three of the night, give Jordan Fox eight. Almost at the halfway point. Toomer. Getting the separation, just couldn't finish. The veteran around Grayson. And this time Grayson, maybe selling some contact, got knocked to the ground by Toomer. McKenzie, opposite hand, and will go to the line. More college basketball coming your way tomorrow night as Marshall takes on ODU on Stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both TV and digital devices without a cable subscription. Marshall and OG ODU tomorrow, 7 Eastern, on Stadium. Welcome to the game. You want to talk about a contrast in styles there. Dan D'Antoni's thundering herd. They want to bring it up the floor as fast as they can. ODU wants to grind you. that for a large portion of this game favored Army. But now, as you mentioned, as McKenzie cuts this to four. He's gotten enough defensive stops to where they've been able to pick up their pace. Fox wanting to set up Wilson. Nice help from the weak side there by Moore. Ball moving and a foul on Bucknell. It's on the younger Funk. He's one of what's five brothers, to which I'll say Mo Kassar, their poor mother. <laughs> exactly right. A wonderful woman. I've just to meet her a few times, as I mentioned, over the travels here in the Patriot League over the years. And critical possession here for Army. Need a good offensive. Ball moving, they continue to look inside. Nice feed from the freshman, Duhart. Lane Wilson gets another. And that time the double team came a little late. Look for Sotos here to continue to try to play make and see if they can get Sistine another look here on offense. That's what they wanted. They had right idea, but turned it over. See Army taking their time, moving that basketball, that extra pass, continue to throw it inside. Wilson uses his body so well, double team comes late. Bucknell has changed their strategy here. They've looked to double in the post all the time because of his presence. And again, another Bucknell kind of careless turnover there where they're trying to get back and chip away at this lead. Inside three seems to be the impossible goal so far for the Bison. Kenzie commits the foul. Second one on Kimball McKenzie. Sometimes when you're struggling to score a little bit like Army is, baseline out of bounds underneath, great opportunity. 20 seconds on the shot clock here. Run your best offensive play, see if they can maybe get it out and then come back inside to Wilson. King creating his own shot in the mid-range. 
there's a little of that talent we were talking about off the air before the game. I think he's a guy that really has a ton of talent and ability. Another terrific pass by Sotos. Guys, he's fun to watch. How loud little Princeton the back door for Kimball McKenzie. Fox. Volleyball. And more just a little bit tougher. Markell deficit still at six. Funk able to get it to Sestino. Didn't quite get his legs under him on the turnaround. Inside of eight minutes, and all of a sudden, a little bit more tense here. A little change with the freshman here at the point here for Army, trying to change the pace a little better defensively. And there they go again, looking inside. Another chippy missed around the basket. And you wonder what Wilson's night would be like had a couple of those gone down like that for Funk. And I have to bring it up again. That basket, terrific shot by young Mr. Funk, but the throw-ahead pass by Sotos, just terrific playmaking ability. And what ends up being a five-point swing with the Wilson miss. And they came by one with Kessler, who hit that shot in the first half. Funk, too many steps. And with 7.04 left of the second half, here come the Bison. Jimmy Sonos doing a good job setting the table for both McKenzie and Funk. Three-point game. Tonight's Patriot League basketball game on Stadium is brought to you by Liberty Mutual, Nugenics Total T, and Four Imprint. Down to just a three-point Army lead. Just over seven minutes left here in the second half. Matt Martucci, the former Hofstra coach, Mo Kassara. And a big time change in the Buckdown Bison here in the second half. Bucknell thus far, getting it done from Nate Sestina. Jimmy Sotos has had a big hand. Coming off of what was 12 assists to end the Diamond Head Classic, what was a tournament record, 10 of them tonight. Really terrific playmaking ability. He's grown up a little bit here in his sophomore season, finding a way to get his teammates involved. A couple careless turnovers early on, but now kind of getting in his rhythm and really able to push the ball up and down and get his teammates involved. Nice job overall by Sotos, really getting this offensive thing clicking for Bucknell. Bison trying to win what's their seventh game and what would be a fourth on the road. 25 wins a year ago, 16 coming in conference play. And I would almost forgotten about this, that not only did they have to play Michigan State in the opening round of the tournament, but in Detroit, no less, and they were able to hang. Yeah, Bucknell was a team that I, you know, obviously followed a lot covering the Patriot League last year that felt if they got the right draw, they would really be able to maybe win some games in the tournament. But tough game to play Michigan State out there. Our officiated crew, I'm looking at something on the replay. Thought Tim Kelly might have been signaling to us that maybe there was a forearm. I wasn't sure what he was signaling us. Yeah, there. I'm not sure. Maybe we could clear that up after the game. Play on? Apparently. And what's been quite a change. Bucknell offensively couldn't find anything. They, the first half gave up 37 points to Army. And Bison, what do you know, in the first not even 13 minutes of this half, have 39 points themselves and have held Army to 18. And Sestina and Wilson both out of the game here for a little quick breather. And can the Black Knights actually capitalize in this situation? Funk and King. Along with Edwards and Fox and Kessler. 
And good position for Edwards. Thank you. Thank you. Not much of an offensive threat, but nice to get something from somebody that doesn't normally provide. And a little undersized in the post there, a little smaller lineup there, but nice offensive possession there by Army, making the basketball move side, top side, throwing the ball inside. Starting January 16th, the best college basketball show on Facebook returns. So you can catch College Hoops Weekly Wednesday, 7.30 Eastern, where we preview the biggest matchups, look back at the top highlights of the week, and react to your questions and comments. That's College Hoops Weekly, Wednesdays at 7.30, starting January 16th, only on Facebook. Dave Ross and uh, your friend and mine, Tim Doyle, on that show. I didn't know what's going to come out of Doyle's mouth. Be some interesting commentary from Timmy. Fellow Long Islander. That's right. Native, I would should say. Terrific player at Northwestern. And who grew up uh, in the same neighborhood, apparently, as Bob McKillop. Oh. Kimball McKenzie with a little bit of mid-range. Yeah, Kimball McKenzie quietly getting this team back into the game there. A couple plays around the basket. Hasn't had a real good look at a three all night. Foul against Cornell. Moore, which is a big one, picks up his fourth personal. Bruce Moore, a really physical, strong athlete. He's kind of been in foul trouble all night, hasn't really been able to get going, so. Subs out, maybe for the little bit of an offensive move here as well for Bucknell. One of five starters, who average close to double figures. He hasn't scored tonight. King. Deep post entry, but Wilson couldn't get it to fall too much. Sotos smelling blood, tie game. Sotos is quietly, maybe not so quietly, developing into one of the best all-around young players in this league. You know, last year kind of deferred a lot, but boy, he is playing well tonight. Said to Nathan Davis before uh, the game at the shoot-around today, did you think he was going to be this good this quick? And he kind of giggled and said, yep. King trying to match, can't do it. Really good look there for him, he just didn't go. And got to try to get a stop here if you're. Sestina wanting the lead big time. I was about to say for him, he shot it so quick. Sestina saw one look, and you see Sotos here in transition. Now here's a guy who really doesn't look to shoot very much. He'll take an open three, but he's really feeling it tonight. Rebounding, passing, shooting. He's been the difference for Bucknell. Yeah, you'd never know it because he doesn't really shoot it that much. But by percentage, he's the second best three-point shooter on this team. 47% clip coming in. Doesn't take bad shots, usually doesn't turn the ball over. And that was the difference in the first half. Just a lot of turnovers for Bucknell. Funk, a little up and under. The acrobatics had him a bit out of control. McKenzie running this end and the finger roll. And how about that throw ahead by Sotos? And McKenzie really good for his size, finishing around the basket. George Gervin would be proud. That was one thing he said he could do. Inside five minutes. And from 24 down to a two-point lead. Reigning Patriot League tournament champion, Bucknell. Funk in and out. Bison get called for the cheap foul. Defensive stops, hustle play right here. Ball never stays in his hands very long. Throw the ball ahead, Sotos knows who to get it to. It's been his playmaking ability. And Kimmel McKenzie, you know, we had a couple clips in the open. He really has a unique ability to finish around the rim. Not a tall guy, but just very crafty around the basket and has had a couple terrific plays here in the second half for Bucknell. And that wasn't a lay it over the front of the rim, you know, transition finger roll, that was Degree of difficulty high. That's a tough shot, trust me. That's a really tough shot to finish. And Wilson, who's played so well for so long here, missed a couple chippies and another missed free throw. All the momentum shifting back to the Bison. Tumor, that won't count. Foul of the floor. You know, one of the turning points in this game, if you remember earlier here in the second half, was 
that quick, explosive drive by Toomer that all of a sudden kind of got the bench into it, got him into it, and all of a sudden you could kind of see Bucknell's athleticism just kind of come out on display. Then Sestina got going, Soto started passing the ball, and boom, the game changed. And Toomer, who actually started the year two of his first 12 from the line, but has worked his way back to semi-respectability. But only at 54%. Messi right down Main Street. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. He never changes his facial expression. Loves to shoot the three. And that time, you see the aggressive take to the basket. Seven now for John Amezzi. Nell shot clock inside 10. Wanted the pick and roll, instead it's McKenzie selling the ball fake. And batted out in a fresh 30 for the Bison. Hustle play there, Avi Toomer, kind of the glue guy for this Bucknell team. And now gets rewarded with the look. Just couldn't get it to go down. Down to a three minute game. If you just joined us, Army led by what was 24 points at the half. And Funk, who goes to the basket, a big reason why. With 3.01 to play in the second half, Bucknell had a lead. John Amezzi made sure it didn't last. Second look, tied at 59. Tonight's game is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Find yourself an agent at Farmers.com. Uh, Bucknell needed some, or Army rather, needed some insurance on that first half lead. It's evaporated. It sure has, and it's been really all Bucknell most of this half. Army's found a way to kind of hang in there and hang in there. John Amezzi with a big three, with a big dunk, and Wilson really hasn't been able to get going. But really, it's going to be now Tommy Funk kind of taking this team over here, getting to the foul line and really controlling the game here. A long way to go, though, 59-59 with three to go. That first half versus this half. My, how it could flip. It's cliche to say, but it, it is a game of runs. But you've said it all night, at least in the second half, Bucknell doing it at both ends, allowing their defense to create opportunities at the other end. And I think this will be a big next step for Army, you know, a team that a lot of people like in this league as the year goes on because of their point guard play, because of their size and their ability to shoot the three. It's, how to finish games off, how to win when games are close, and that certainly favors Bucknell as they've been a team. Who, you know, many of these guys, you know, didn't play a ton of minutes last year, but they've they've won a lot of games. They know what it takes to win championships and how to win clay, close, tough games. Patriot League's assist leader, Funk. Showing he can do some scoring as well. Came in at 11 points a game and continues to distribute. Side of three minutes, and the Black Knights trying to hold on. What would be a huge win for Jimmy Allen to start league play. McKenzie challenging, and will go to the line. Fox the guilty party. Veteran play there, Kimball McKenzie. Hasn't really had a lot of good looks at the three tonight. Hasn't been able to get it go. Taking the ball to the basket, get to the foul line. Where he's so effective. And certainly allows Bucknell then to set their defense. Kenzie, the difference between being, as uh, we said, the guy behind the guy behind the guy, and you can actually add another guy in there because they graduated 4,800 points. But settling into the role of not only being the alpha, but the go-to. 15 for him tonight. Wilson able to set him up on the block. And Army reclaims. Boy, two fun assist guys tonight, huh? With Funk and Soto, they just share the basketball, get their teammates involved. Big time playmaking. And Funk with what, six assists. And Amezzi able to turn up the D. Here 
throwing the ball inside to Bruce Moore, who really has not done much offensively tonight. They got to get Nate Sestina a look. He's really been quiet here offensively the last couple minutes. Yeah, went from being on his way to a career night to all of a sudden not scoring. And the movement going down the other way. And Bruce Moore is just fouled out of this game. He didn't really clip him, but he was moving. And, you know, Kimmel McKenzie got to wait for that screen, let that big athletic body, Bruce Moore, set that screen. But, you know, this time in the game, you get a little hurried up and a little quick. And on the road, tough call. Bruce Moore just not able to get in rhythm all night. And held scoreless in 23 minutes. His night prematurely done. Funk looking for some comfort with this lead. Grayson, that would have been a big shot for the sophomore Lonnie Grayson. Instead, Bison a chance to tie or take the lead inside of two minutes to go. I don't think that's the shot Coach Allen wanted. He's had a lot of, a lot of looks tonight, and I think they really needed to go back into Wilson there. And Lonnie Grayson now two for 10 from the arc. Sotos and Meeks, but again batted out, guess who, it's Sestina. Yeah, terrific hustle play there by Sestina. New shot clock here, get the ball in Sotos' hand, let him create. Like to see if they can get Sestina in a pick and roll or maybe even look to him in the post. Here comes the pick and roll. Soto splitting it, and they'll call the blocking foul. Tim Kelly adamant. Good little acting job here. Sotos gets through, and let's see it from that angle. Yeah, good call. Tim Kelly had it right. Some big bodies going at it there, boy. Hey, it's, it's screener season for Oscar voters. Yeah. They're sending them out. And down to what's a one-point game. Boy, Sotos has been terrific. Just absolutely terrific in the second half. has followed up what was 12 assists in that blowout win over UNLV at Diamond Head with 11 more tonight. But only one of two on his first two foul shot attempts. And Army still with a one point lead. This has got to be Tommy Funk time. Fox is your second option. If not, look into Wilson. Ball's got to stay in Funk's hands. Let him make the decisions. Inside of a minute, Funk with the setup and a great look for Fox, but Sestina getting tough under the glass. And that's the look you wanted. And timeout for Nathan Davis. Tough shot, but that's your senior. That's the guy you want shooting that shot. If it goes in, you know, you really got yourself a nice lead. So I like that play by Army, and now it's going to come down to defense. Tune in every Monday through Friday and check out all that Stadium has to offer at 10 Eastern. It's the territory where we take you through the biggest sports stories from across the country. Then it's Sauce and Schramm at noon, followed by a new high school show, Emerge, at 2 p.m. Campus Insiders back half an hour to 2.30. And then we set you up for the night in sports with the rally. Game time in America at 6. Stadium, it's a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. Well, if we have to welcome you in now, where you been for this entire second half? One point lead for Army. Bucknell coming back from 24 down to be in this position. 24 down, fought their way back, had a chance and actually did take the lead. And now with possession, Sotos has been the creator. Look for him to create again. Maybe a little two-man game with Nate Sestina. Kimball McKenzie will be the third option. And if you're Army here, you've really got to talk. You've got to play without fouling. Got to try to secure a rebound on a long shot. Sotos and Sestina briefly had the look. McKenzie rising up. And that was it. One, two, three. Sotos, Sestina, McKenzie, really good look. Little difference in the shot clock here. Six or seven seconds. Tommy Funk got to keep the basketball in his hands here. Spread him out. They'll go one, four low. See if he can create a foul. Look for Fox rolling up. Nathan Davis looks like he's going to have the Bison play out this possession. Seven second differential shot and game clock down to six. Funk has to be the bailout. Left up there. 
Bison, five seconds, down one. McKenzie, and the layup for Tuma with 1.6 to go. All the way back from 24 down and a lead with inside two seconds. Amazing. This is what college basketball is all about. You get a great look, doesn't go in. And what presence, what presence here. You see the tough shot, I thought it was in, it looked in. Sestina stays with it, gives it up. But what presence here by McKenzie to get that pass there to Toomer. John and Mezzi just a second late, terrific pass there to give it up and not gamble and take a quick bad shot. A lot of players there, Kimball McKenzie with the experience, would have thrown up a quick, you know, heave shot there thinking they don't have time. He stays with it, throws it down to Toomer on the recipient. What a play, what a game here in the last couple minutes. So 1.6 seconds here. Let's talk a little bit of strategy. Army's got time for a catch and shoot. So Bucknell, look for them to put somebody tall on the basketball, want to try to make that a long leaping pass. And if you're Bucknell, you got to make sure don't foul any shooters, okay? You don't want to foul anybody, any, any foul is a bonus. If you're Army, you go from your largest halftime lead of the season to giving up what's a huge second half for Bucknell. And will it be capped by Toomer's layup? Interesting, they choose not to put somebody on the basketball, which I would do there to make it not an easy pass. So they essentially have... Here comes the inbounds, King. Fox won't get it off. Toomer again at that end. And the Bucknell Bison down 24 at the half. Put together a 51 point second 20 minutes. And come all the way back to stun Army. Here are the Patriot League opener. Unbelievable game. Unbelievable presence by Bucknell to stay with it. A nice little play here. They actually had a good look at it. The pass was just short. Bucknell really actually didn't defend that very well till the very end, taking a guy off the basketball, which I uh, don't really understand there. But they get lucky, and they certainly deserve a, a hard-fought win here, which was not easy in the second half. And Avi Toomer, a young man who battled plenty of injuries a year ago, able to come up with what was a big second half, along with some others. Sestina, of course, in there. Sotos, McKenzie, the supporting cast, and Bucknell move it to seven and six. Played one good half of basketball. I'm sure that's what Nathan Davis will say, but it was the right half to be able to get back and win this game. And that's what league play is all about, finding a way to win on the road in Army. You know, just a gut-wrenching loss in a game they really could have had. You know, it was one bounce away or one play away. And Bucknell, on the road, finds a way to win. Well, that'll do it here from West Point with our final score. The Bucknell Bison 64-63 over the Army Black Knights.